behind the scenes is going to drop a little link in there for you to follow. If you haven't already seen those summer craft party projects, they're so fun, quick, somewhat easy to do, but always a little bit of challenge in there and lots of creativity. So without further ado, and that reminder, I'm going to introduce today's guest, and this is going to be Susie Furrer. Hello and welcome, Susie. I'd love for you to just give us a little introduction on yourself, and then we're going to dive right into some questions. That sounds great. I'm so happy to be here. I am Susie Fur, and I have, I believe, 11, 11 classes on Craftsy. I started um, in 2011. I think I did my last class, maybe 2015 or 16. Loved doing them, loved filming them, loved the team. So much fun. I'm so happy they're still up and they're doing well and people are finding them. Um, so that's my Craftsy history. And before that, I um, have had a school called Apparel Arts in um, the Bay Area. We started in San Francisco, moved over to Oakland, which is, as you probably know, very close to, to, uh, to San Francisco. And I uh, had Apparel Arts for 24 glorious years, loved every minute of it. And then, of course, the pandemic hit and, um, and we switched our format but back to the old apparel arts, it was a school where we, uh, we train people to work in the industry. We train very serious hobbyists in, um, it, you know, in, in sewing and craft. Uh, and we trained a lot of costumers as well too. So, so much fun. Um, we did a pivot uh, with the pandemic. Of course, we had to shut the, the live studio down and, um, and we moved over to online. So now we are at Apparel Arts Productions and we teach online classes. So that's, uh, that's kind of where, where I've been for the last 25 years. And before that, I trained as a, um, as a pattern maker. So really, my, my training is in pattern making um, back in the day in the 80s and, um, and did some clothing design too. So I've been in the industry for quite some time now. And I still love it. And I still find it exciting. So I'm looking forward to your questions. Yes, and we're going to dive right in. Uh, we have a couple that have been already coming in, but please, if you're just joining us, go ahead and drop your questions into the chat box. We will get to as many as possible, which means we're going to jump right into our first question right now. Here comes one from Cynthia. So Cynthia says, I made a simplicity pattern for a simple round neck sleeveless dress. I cut out the size that fits my measurements, and when I sewed it together, it is like a tent on me, way too big. How do I fix this? Do I keep sewing down until it's not so big? Add darts in the front and the back. I need some basic help. Haven't sewn a dress since high school and I am 68 years old now. Thank you. <laughs> Glad you are getting back to sewing. Um, you know, it's not you. It's not you. The pattern companies, um, the, the sizing is really funky. When, um, when patterns were first developed back in the, you know, we started to see patterns in, in the late 1800s. The, the sizing was, if it's a 12, it would fit a 12 year old girl. If it was a 14, it would fit a 14 year old young lady. So the sizing was crazy. Um, I, well, it worked for the time. It worked for the time because everybody was on board with that, um, that format. And, and I'm not knocking the pattern companies at all, but there's the sizing has never quite caught up to something that is um, intuitive when you're looking at it. It makes sense if you're new or returning to sewing. So with the numbers, the, the 12, the eight, the 10, throw them out. They don't even have them in your mind. Just look at the pattern envelope. Um, and I will answer your question. I'm, I'm circling, circling around to your question. When you look at the pattern envelope, look at bust, waist, and hips. That's kind of where you want to fit yourself into. The number has nothing to do with the size you usually wear in, um, in ready to make, ready to wear clothing. Um, so check the measurements of the circumference measurements of the bust and the waist and the hips and kind of fit you, fit you yourself in, in there, skip the numbers. Um, but to answer your immediate question, that's a tough one. Um, because sometimes if um, too big or too small, you can, you can keep coming in, but the proportions might not be right in the interior. 
so like where the figure points are or the you know the the breast cup or anything like that where the waistline is um i yeah you're in it you're you know you're in the process so i all you can do now is just keep making it smaller um and, and just keep taking off the sides um you you don't want to come in and take off down the center front neck or the center back neck because it might make the neck too tight but that's always a thought too if it has a center front seam and a center back seam can you pull it in right here but check, make sure it doesn't get too tight on the neck. So to answer your question, yeah, keep coming in. You're in the process. Get as, Make it as good as you can make it. But on your next pattern, really research the back of that envelope and, and, um, and also check the um, circumference measurements. And you'll skip the numbers. You'll, you'll be a little bit closer to what your body shape is. All right. Well, thank you for that question. We're going to roll into our next one next. Uh, Katerina has our next question. Uh, Katerina says, hi, could you advise me on how to alter a blouse pattern with a grown on cap sleeves that pull too much over the shoulder? Should I alter the depth of the armhole, which was also a bit too snug with the turned up cuff, or should I alter the slope of the shoulder? Say again what the problem is right here, just so I'm really clear. The, um, the, the first, I think it was the first sentence. Yes, uh, it looks like it's the cap sleeves that are pulling too much over the shoulder. Up here, yep. how to alter that. Um, let's see, and it's an all-in-one cap, which I'm assuming, um, could you, and you're in the mock-up stage, so could you, put a, um, could you cut, could you cut, where's one of our gals? Let's get a gal here. Could you, um, without seeing it, it's a little bit tougher. So I hope I'm answering your, your question. Can you cut kind of a wedge from here, maybe to the um, perimeter, maybe cutting from here to here? And can you open it? Cause I'm assuming it's fitting down in here. Let's get her back in here. Um, I'm wondering if you could cut from the shoulder kind of to the perimeter right here, a little slanted thing right there and add a wedge, which will push that cap out a little bit and um, give you a little more shoulder. It sounds like you need more, you need more shoulder here before the cap starts. So cut it, you'd have to do it on the front and back, perhaps a little wedge that it ends at the perimeter of the pattern and just slide that out a little bit and insert. I think that should, should help. Okay. I think this was a question that came in a little bit early. So Katerina, if you're watching and you wanted to add anything more specific that you would like Susie to talk, uh, speak to drop that in the chat box and I'll keep an eye out for that. All right, Lisa's got our next question here. Lisa says, hi, Susie. Thank you so much for your classes about slopers. Having my own sloper has made all of my projects fit better on the first try, and I've even made a few items directly from the sloper, a fun new experience for me. Uh, my problem is that despite the back of the envelope fabric suggestions, picking the right fabric for my pattern is still mm -hmm. trial and error, mostly error, <laughs> since I rely for online fabric shopping. Do you have suggestions or any resources to suggest for something like that? Oh, that, that's a question I get a lot, Lisa. I'm glad you're sewing, glad you took the classes and you're using the slopers. I think that's fantastic. Um, fabric is tough. Um, you know, let me think here. It's good to take a textiles class if you can. Um, there are so many different fabrics out there that you have, it's, you have to understand like weave structure and uh, knit versus woven, adding some stretch in there, things like that. Taking a textiles class is really helpful in that it, um, you, you understand like the broad category of textiles. However, it's a lot of trial and error with picking the right fabric for your, um, for your garment. There's no set formula where you're like, oh, I'm making a jumper do that in cotton. I'm making a jacket, put that in wool. You know, there, there's no set thing because you know you can use a lot of different fabrics for a lot of different um, projects, right? Um, I wish I had a clear answer for you. It's almost just experience. Um, what, you know what I would do, what could be helpful, a textiles class would be helpful just to build your vocabulary around textiles. 
but I would look in your closet and you say, okay, I'm making this um, button down shirt. And look in your closet at, at button down shirts and see, or go shopping perhaps and, um, and look, oh, look, that's made out of a hundred percent cotton. You know, oh, it's cotton with a 2% stretch or oh, it's made out of linen and that seems to work well. So before you choose your fabric, you might want to run into, you know, Nordstrom or something like that and Macy's and go in and look at garments similar to what you're trying to make and, you know, go inside. What are they making? Oh, it's polyester. It's rayon. It's this, it's that. Um, and, and you can really build a vocabulary that way. Start by looking in your closet and say, yo, I, I didn't realize that this was tensile. And you know what is tensile? Tensile is a um, it's made from um, eucalyptus trees, and and not that you'll get that from the tag, but you can Google it and see if you're like I've never heard of you know this fabric. You can Google Google it and see, or use the experience from your textiles class to know what it is. So as a long answer to your very short question, a textiles class would help, and then also. Um, looking at, at the tags in your clothing when you're trying to make something similar. And that should narrow it down a little bit and also give you like a, a very tactile um, reference. Well, oh yeah, it needs to feel like this in order to look like that. So I think that might help. All right, thank you. Uh, let's move to Monique's question next. Uh, Monique is asking for recommendations for darts for someone who is larger than a D cup. Should you use both a French dart and a regular side dart for the bodice? Thank you in advance. Both a, um, a French dart and a regular side. So the side dart, let's take our gal. I'm glad I have the gal here. Um, so side dart right here, French dart is a lowered, basically a lowered side dart. So when you're, when a client is, is busty or then say a D, a D cup, even a D cup, you might, you, you, it depends on, um, you, you need a certain leg length to support a width of dart. So it does get tougher when you are, um, when you're working with wider darts. So if you find after careful sewing and pressing, your, your dart still puckers, you know, at the, the tip, you're not getting it flat. You probably do need to go to two darts. You need to reduce that one big dart into two. Um, and how you can do that, kind of the most conventional way that that's done is having a, um, a waist dart and then a kind of a, a French dart, just a, a kind of a dart that's, that's here, that's pointing to the, um, let's turn this a little so we see her. Um, your, you might have a dart right here that's pointing to the high figure point, backed off a little bit perhaps, and then you might have a waist dart right here. That's the most conventional way um, to split up your darts is French dart and waist dart. However, you can also, this looks really cool, if you take that, that dart that is too big, say right here at the side, and you can make it into two darts. Um, so you can have two darts right here, you can even do three darts. The other thing um, that helps a lot, though I, I've heard from um, you know my bustier students and clients, they, they get so sick of the princess seam, but a princess seam to the shoulder, a princess seam to the armhole, a princess seam and dart combination. The princess seam on a, um, a, a larger busted client is, it really does fit really, really well. Because that big dart is being distributed, a big dart width and that whole shaping is really being distributed along the whole seam. So you're not asking so much of that five inch dart. You know, you're really, it's, it's being distributed all the way along so you can make it smoother. So the answer, if you are uh, a D cup or larger, two darts, often you get it, it looks a little bit, um, you can get those points a little bit flatter um, or go to a princess seam or a princess seam dart combination, which is what you see in like corsets and, and bustiers, multiple seams. Because think of this, mul really this applies to the waist, but when you have multiple seams, um, you know, that, that are absorbing the shaping, it's going to fit better. If you have if you have like one big chunky dart right here and say here, maybe four chunky darts, it's actually going to fit better if you can do some distributing 
where there's one here and maybe here, and then your side seam. Your side seam is essentially a dart, right? Because it's shaped. So you can usually get a better fit if you spread out the load, okay? You're not asking so much right here. You can spread it out along a few lines. And that's why bustiers and corsets, things like that, they fit so well because there's so many seam lines sharing the load. So if you're having trouble getting those darts flat or those seams flat, Think about it, just share the load, see where else you can put in a, um, a seam. And you don't want to think like, oh, there's too many seams. What are people going to think? <laughs> They're not going to think anything. They're going to think that fits. That is a beautiful fit. That looks amazing. I, I sometimes with my, um, you know, younger students, they're trying to get away from darts and seams um, because a lot of the newer fast fashion and fast fashion, you know, it's quicker to sew and cheat, therefore cheaper if there can be less darts and seams. But go back to, you know, the new look in the 40s and go back to fashion from the, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, a lot of darts and a lot of seam lines in there. And that's why it always looks so polished and so, so clean and so fitted so nicely. So the goal isn't to get rid of seams and darts. The goal is to, you know, utilize them for a good fit. So I hope that helped. All right. I think we're going to jump back a little bit. Looks like Katerina mm -hmm. brought in a couple more details in here. So while you have, um, I know your, your lady next to you, I know you're using her for Katerina's question earlier. Uh, she says doing a slash and insert wedge is an option. Um, and yes, it is an all in one with the cap sleeve as a part of the front and back. And it's pulling over the shoulder and bunches a lot in the front and the back where a sleeve seam would be. Oh, okay. Again, without seeing it, do you think, Katarina, you need more um, height right here? Do you need, um, if it's pulling right here, and I'm sorry if I'm not, don't have a really good visual of it, but um, if it's bunching here, it's probably too tight right there, I imagine. Um, do you need to um, try this, this wedge right here? but it sounds like you might need to lift it up a little bit too and get more room in there. Um, how can you get them? If, it, if it's bunching right there, um, if we're adding right here and it's coming out here, try, does it have a center front seam and a center back seam? Could you cut across here and, and insert a little bit right here to lift it up? It sounds like it might be too tight right here. So you need to lift it up right here, push that up a little bit. Um, and if you have, you can do that if you have a center front and center back seam because it needs to go to zero at the center front um, or not necessarily. You could cut it, you could cut it if you can do this, if it's, it's hard to say without how fitted it is down here. You can cut it across here and um, yeah, let's try to do a little wedge right there. Is there any way to pop a picture in here? Maybe not. Um, I really want to- That's a question for our tech team. <laughs> I'm not sure. It, well, Katarina, you need more, if it's bunching right here, it's, it's too small. It's too small right here. So it sounds like you need more length this way. Um, that's why I'm saying if you could cut it, you could pop a little wedge in there and that'll lift it up. You need some lift right here. Um, you could, if it does, it's an all in one, but if it has a shoulder seam, can you add to your shoulder seam? If it's, let me do, um, sorry, I have a little piece of paper here. Um, let me think about this for a sec. If it's probably looking like something like that. And this is, I'll put center front right there. Terrible drawing. <laughs> but like, there's your cap sleeve, right? Coming off of right here, okay? It sounds like it's too tight probably right here where your, you know, where your arm actually is, okay? Um, so you could, let's get a different color here. You could add, you need, maybe you need that wedge. I would try that too. But if it's, if this is, if there's a seam right here, why don't you lift up right here? Give yourself a little wedge like that. Okay. And you can just add up here. If there's a shoulder seam right here, it's not an all like the whole thing, the front and back aren't, aren't attached in the pattern. You could cut it 
you, know, you could add a, like maybe half an inch right here and then blend to zero. I might, it sounds pretty tight. I'd start with say half an inch and then go to zero at the neck up like that. Okay. And that's going to give you just more room. Cause that's what it sounds like. You need more lift right here. So that, that could work. You could also try the, um, I would do this first and then go in and try the, um, you know, the little wedge like that. Okay. If you need to push it out more, if it needs to go out more, do the wedge. If, if it's too tight, right where the arm is, you probably need more height for your, um, for your arm. So that has to come up maybe half an inch to zero on the front and back. Let's try that. Hopefully Katerina, I understood that. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> and again, I will get to as many questions as possible. Katerina, if you have more details, we can hop back towards the end of our time together and return to this if we need to. Uh, but we'll move on for now. Um, our next question is about sloping shoulders. Okay. So when making pattern adjustments for sloping shoulders, how uh -huh. do you draw a new smoothly rounded arm hole over the shoulder point? So... Let's look at this again. So you, the show slow, I have slo sloping shoulders too. Um, so do you, if you can pop something in the chat, are they, are, are you, are you ending right here? Is this where you want to end? Or are you also talking about like a drop shoulder situation? I'll kind of answer both. So if you, what you need to do is a similar wedge of what we just did. Let's do another, um, bad drawing, shall we? Um, so what I have to do on my shoulders, if you know, with the commercial patterns is, um, so here's your, there's your shoulder front and back. I would pinch what you need to take out, you know, on, and split it between the front and back, provided your shoulder is in the, the right place. We'll talk about that in a second, but you probably just need to drop down, a, you know, as much as you need to, I'm going to draw this in here like that. Um, uh, slide in regular shoulder is what we're talking about. Okay. So you're just coming down. That's a zero. You're coming down, um, half an inch, right? I, whatever you need, you might need an eighth. You might need a quarter, half an inch front and back. And then you're going to go to zero at the high neck point, provided the neck is fitting well. Okay. So it's really just dropping it down and then, um, going to zero. The slightly rounded shoulder that you, um, that you, well, hopefully that helped. Okay. That's number one. In what you can, there's two things you can try as well. In a lot of um, shoulders, so again, if this is our shoulder, okay, down here, should have had a nice sketchbook. <laughs> um, okay, right here in the middle, like, Shoulders on really um, high-end garments tend to be actually dipped in a little bit. So middle of the shoulder, you come down right here about a 16th to an eighth in the middle of the shoulder. And then you scoop this around. See, your shoulder has a scoop in it like that. Um, because if you feel on your body where your, um, your collarbone, like the middle of your shoulder, there's a dip right there. So you, you actually scoop it down a little bit to make it fit really nicely through there. It's not done on a lot of garments because with, with cutting in factories, it's much, it's much quicker to cut a straight line or you know that slant if it's straight than, the, um, than to kind of go in and dip it. So that's really kind of a high-end thing, but it's, it's nice. You can try it front and back. Um, so go find the middle and dip it down a 16th or an eighth right here. See if you like that. Um, in order to get a nice, so that kind of makes it fit nicely like this. In a, um, like in a tailored jacket or a suit jacket or something like that, or something that might have shoulder pads, go with the straight, but make the back um, a little bit wider in when you have a garment with sleeves, you can make that back um, shoulder wider by like an eighth, a quarter, three eighths, usually max. Um, and then you can ease that back shoulder into the front shoulder and um, 
so it ultimately it measures as the front, but it, that will give kind of an arc. It'll also help you move your arms forward in more comfortable fashion. That's really what the point of making the back shoulder bigger and easing it in. That's really the point of that. But it does, it does give you a nice arced shoulder. I'm exaggerating that, but a nice arced shoulder, especially if you're putting in um, shoulder pads and that always looks good. Also, if you, if you put a piece of twill tape on your shoulder, when you ease that back in and then when you sew the front to the back, sew it with a piece of twill tape on there. And I usually hold the twill tape about an eighth of an inch short. So it's a five inch shoulder. My twill tape will be four and seven eighths. And I pull, I pull the twill tape starts. Well, it starts here in, in here and the eighth is taken out of the middle. So it ends up giving a nice curved arc to your, to your seam right there. Um, so there's your long answer to your short question of how do I get a, how do I drop the shoulders on something for sloping shoulders? Um, a couple of details to add before we move away from this one entirely. Uh, uh, I believe it's an email address that is the username. So I'm not sure if this is Yen or Lulu that we're talking to here, but uh, they did slide in a couple more specifics. When I cut a wedge out from the front and the back, they meet in an angle and when you sew the shoulder seam? They meet at an angle at the end of shoulder. Tell me if, if Lulu, tell me if this is right when you sew your, um, like your, uh, let's do something like that. Do you think the scoop could help? So the scoop, well, let me see. Do you mean like your, like then your, if this is your center front and this is your center back, um, do you mean, Lulu, that your your shoulder comes to a point right here when they when the front and the back come together? Is that what you mean? Can she pipe in? Well, yeah, she did let us know that it, it is Lulu. So thank you for that. Um, and I'll keep an eye and see if that's what. She's is it is it like coming to a peak or a valley when you put your end of shoulders together? That's my let's I answer that and all right. Nothing is popping in right away. So let's move to another question. And then Lulu, if there's anything else that you wanted to specify, we'll get back to this one. Okay. Uh, let's move away from shoulders for just a moment with our next one. I did see a pants question in here. So let me find that. We'll move down a little bit. Here we go from Mary. Mary asks, what would your first adjustment in making pants fit a taller woman with a pear shape? I make adjustments and nothing ever seems to fit right. Hmm. Um, you know what I would try first? I'm sure, I'm sure Mary, you've done the lengthen and shorten here for the rise. That's pretty obvious, right? So, or maybe not, you know, you wanna, you might need to cut it um, and, and drop it down a little bit since you're taller um, to get the height from the, um, let's look at our other gal there, from the, um, you know, the crotch up, you might need more it's called the rise. You might need more of that, but you know, with pants, when you get some, like it's bunching up in the crotch or that's not fitting well, you know what you should try if you can't quite get that right is come out to the side seam. I'll see if I could point right there, the side seam. On your pant pattern, start adjusting, you know, like if it's not fitting, sometimes you think, okay, let's see, here's my, um, let me think about this. Like here's the front. Let's do this like that. Here is, here's your pant, say like this, okay? Here's your pant. Um, sometimes if it's not fitting, you're like, oh, I, I need to add here. And you keep like adding and adding out here or, or taking away. Just try not to, to mess too much with the crotch shape initially, unless you need to. What you should probably be thinking of doing is maybe coming out a little bit here at the side, all right? Level with where the crotch uh, point is, try coming out at the side a little bit. And because you might just need more room 
not in the not in the shape of the crotch or the the whole measurement of the crotch length you might need to try working with the side which doesn't seem intuitive because the problem seems to be right here but start like seam ripping at the side and see if letting it out a little bit level with the crotch kind of helps uh the problem in here okay so without knowing specifics of what's going on with the pant aside from your lengthen or shorten I would start moving over to the side seam on the front and back rather than the crotch. Um, you know, if it's too tight, of course, you can always just do a line at the low hip, cut it and insert um, as you, um, in order to get it higher, you know, if it's sitting too low on you. So you could do that front and back, but don't, don't overlook the side seam when you're trying to um, get a pant to fit. The side seam level with the, um, the, um, the crotch point. The other thing to do too, uh, Mary, which is really helpful is it, let's say you have a pair of pants that you've, you've liked, but you've kind of, you, they fit you well, but they're wearing out. Maybe you're going to give them away or something. Cut them, cut them, just cut it up and, um, and really see what, what crotch, what the shape of a front and back, back crotch curve, what it looks like in relation to how well it's fitting you. So if there's a pant that you're willing to sacrifice, that's, that's a good idea. So just cut along your seam lines and get your whole front piece and, and look at it and be like, oh, okay, I'm gonna put this down on my commercial pattern and, um, and I'm gonna just trace this shape and see where we go from here. Because that, that, that's the quickest and, and um, most clear way to do it. Find a pant that fits you well, that you're will willing to sacrifice, cut it up, see what that crotch length is, See, especially see what that shape is. See if they're going out the side like I'm talking about, okay? I think that would um, that would be really, really helpful. Okay. okay. I actually wanna tag on to what you're already talking about. Um, we had a commenter, I believe it's Janine, I hope I'm saying that properly, uh, says that she's got a curvy protruding backside. My mm -hmm. low hip is six and a half inches from my high hip. Okay. And there is a seven inch difference in circumference. And what would be the best way to address a proper fit in that situation? Um, so, and I'm assuming a smaller waist, I think, a, a small, like um, curvy. I would assume with that, yes. So like there's a definite difference in size there. So I think, um, Janine, what you should explore is putting um, uh, multiple darts across the back waist starts. So not just one, I, it, since you're curvy, I think you're asking one is asking too much from a, um, a, a like one waist start right here and one right here. You probably need um, to at least two darts. So four across the back. And I would, I would also like uh, maybe have the darts inch and a quarter or so apart, inch and a half apart, instead of them coming straight down, angle them a little bit. So if, you know, so the, the width between the points is maybe like three inches or something like that. And I, I think you just need multiple darts to, to carry the load. You know, you can't expect too much from that one dart, especially if you're, you know, smaller at the waist and then you, you get curvy through the, the bum. You need multiple darts. Um, even if you're using a yoke, like it's a, 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 a jean and you have a yoke seam, it's okay to have darts coming out of a yoke for sure. So if you're curvy, again, darts are your friends. That's how you're gonna get a good fit. And also there's a center back seam right here. So you could have, you know, essentially that center back seam is a, is a dart. And then you'll have, um, cause you can, it's not straight, it tends to be angled. So you'll have a dart right here and then two darts here, two darts here. That's where how you're gonna get a good fit in pants um, from waist through the curve of your high hip to your um, to your low hip. Hopefully that helped. And Janine did say, yes, smaller waist is what we were going for here okay. too. Yeah, darts, darts, darts. Perfect, and Lulu did say your drawing, going back to Lulu's question, was accurate. So that shoulder that you held up and showed us was correct. Okay, good. Hopefully that'll help. <laughs> All right, let's go to this question next. 
Uh, hey, Susie, is there a mental trick you use to easily recall where to add or remove length or fabric to adjust fit? Similar to the cap sleeve adjustment that you just showed, if something is tight along a vertical line of the body, do you add length along a horizontal seam? Um, let's see, I might come back to that question just to clarify, but uh, where, where uh, an easy way to know where to add length Depends on the garment, but um, let's let's go back to this. And here's one thing that I think makes is a helpful fitting tool. If you have loose vertical wrinkles um, in a in a garment, loose vertical wrinkles, it's too loose on you. If you have really taut horizontal wrinkles, it's too tight. So that's, that's a general rule that, that, you know, rules are made to be broken. They can, but generally speaking, that helps a lot. Loose vertical, it's too loose on you. Really taut horizontal, it's too tight on you. So go back to the beginning of that question, where the question part is. Um, is there a mental trick that you can use to easily recall where to add or remove length or fabric to adjust fit? length um, or fabric. So um, not really. I mean, again, if I'm, if I'm answering correctly, the, um, the, the, okay. So there was that rule that I just gave you, which doesn't, to doesn't quite answer your question, but I think it's helpful. Um, and then otherwise, when you're adjusting for length, you want to adjust where you're not going to mess with anything. Like, um, you know, if you have a sleeve placket, you, you make that sleeve adjustment above the placket, okay? If, um, if there is a, um, you know, on a pant, you would adjust not necessarily, if the, if the foundation, the foundation is from waist to like base of the torso, if that's fitting fine, you would tend to want to adjust at the thigh, because that tends to pull all the guidelines up, the knee and the base and everything like that. It'll it'll pull it up. Um, so the general the general rule is you you're adjusting length or excess fabric where you're not going to mess with anything. So it's above vents or above um, plackets. It would be above a slit on a dress. Maybe you could probably handle taking it out even with the slit. But generally you, you look for where it's not gonna um, mess with anything. And then in your upper body, if you wanna see where the apex is of the, um, of the, you know, where the figure point is on your pattern, which on you know, commercial patterns, it generally shows where that figure point is you have to be careful because if you adjust like here through the armhole or you pull this up here, you're pulling the figure point up. Um, so you either need to readjust that down or make a different plan for, um, for where you're gonna make that adjustment. So if I was adjusting the top of something, I tend to do it below the, um, the figure point. If below the figure point, if this is fitting perfectly right across here. So when I make adjustments here, I tend to go like two inches up and then I fold out or I cut and I lengthen it because this is kind of no man's land. I'm not messing with the um, waist, I'm not messing with the bust. So just try to stay away from important um, fitting areas. <laughs> just got the comment. This is what I mean, we got there. <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going through here to find a couple more to get some variety in. I will tell you, there's a lots of questions about shoulders in here. So we were really rolling on those um, and I'll get to as many of those as I can, but I know we've got a little more than 15 minutes left. So I'd like to get a little variety in here too. Uh, we've got a beginner question here from Maria. Uh, Maria is totally new to sewing and would like to start making things. I have made tote bags but okay. nothing else. So what would you suggest next? Uh, welcome to sewing, Maria. Fantastic, nice to have you. Um, let's see, uh, it is great to start with the tote bags and the pillows and the home deck stuff, you know, um, because it gets your feet wet and you're less critical of, of those projects than you are the, the clothing that you make. Um, so good, that was a good place to start. I would start probably with a, um, uh, 
what would I start with? Depends on what you know, what you what you wear. Um, maybe avoid something with zippers. Those zippers aren't that hard, but sometimes they can be intimidating. So you want to look at something that is going to set you up for success. So um, I would go probably maybe with a skirt, but if you don't wear skirts, maybe like a sleeveless shell, that would be a good thing to start with. I know there's a lot of independent companies that, um, that do a really nice, um, you know, uh, like a top where kind of like what, well, something simple that is like a linen top that is kind of shaped like a T. Okay, that's always a good project because you don't have to set in a sleeve. The pattern pieces tend to be, you know, like T-shaped like that. So I think I would go for that even more than a skirt. I would go for a simple like two-piece top that has, you know, maybe some drop shoulder in it, something like that that you can pull over your head. Um, and, and a simple pattern. And a lot of times the pattern companies will tell you, oh, this is easy. This is simple that sort of thing. So do your research on the, on the pattern, try to keep the pieces to, you know, five or less, five or less pattern pieces is, is very manageable because in sewing, you want to, you want to build a foundation and you already started building your foundation with, with tote bags, which is great. So now you move, move to the easy projects. Don't try to take something a on a difficult fabric or a difficult pattern because you want to build that foundation um, with easy projects and that's that's what you want to do because then you're enjoying it if you jump right to a tailored jacket there's there's no joy there if you haven't if the first one you do you know there's a lot of work in there so less than my advice less than five pattern pieces look at some of those independent pattern companies that do just the cute little linen tops go with an easy fabric too go with those original fabrics that we had up until rayon was invented in in you know 1890 in the 1890s go for the linen go for the cotton uh wool um uh hemp is an easy fabric to work, work with um silk actually stay away from silk unless it's what's called a raw silk um which would be you know your more sturdy silks maybe stay away from silk go with your cottons go with your linens your hemp um things like that. So build, build that good foundation with patterns that are five pieces or less and, and the fabrics that are easy to work with. Cotton, linen, um, uh, hemp, that kind of feel to your fabrics. All right. All right. Well, while we're talking about patterns, Janice has a question about pattern selection. Okay. So Janice says, I have small shoulders, but a larger bust and tummy. Should I buy patterns to fit the shoulders or the mm -hmm. bust? Fantastic question. You should get patterns that fit your shoulder. Um, and then you might have to do some research on how to fit it the rest of the, you know, the rest of the way. There is, there's two ways to approach a pattern and, and both have their merits. The kind of the old school way is okay, size, but we know that that doesn't always translate into what you're looking for and what would fit your body. So the you you'd say, okay, let's see, let's have it fit the bust because that's harder to build in bigger darts or smaller darts. So there's a lot of merit to that, to fit the bust. But really, I've, I've um, what I have found and what I have been reading too is fit the shoulders. Because if the shoulders fit you well, if you have a nice shoulder going right here, okay, the rest can be adjusted. But it's really hard to adjust a shoulder because that would involve the sleeve, you know, messing with the sleeve, maybe messing with the neck. And that shoulder is so important. You, what you, how you want to think about shoulders is that it's a saddle. Okay. If that shoulder is sitting properly on you and it's properly sized for you, that then you, you, you end up with a garment where you're feeling like, oh, this was made for me. This feels so good. Like it's so on me. Those shoulders aren't too big. So they're slipping to the back or moving around. It just feels like, it, you know, when you're in a, a saddle, you can even imagine it if you've never been in a saddle. I've only been in a saddle a couple of times, but I always use it as a, as a reference. If, you know, you're, you're sitting like this, think of your shoulder seam as like, down the middle of that saddle, because if your, your legs need to balance it, right? So if you, if you lean over too far, you're falling off one way or the other, but that, that shoulder seam needs to sit right below your earlobe. 
okay? Like that. And then, then fairly straight out. And as you're looking at the person, you should kind of see the shoulder seam, okay? It's not something that should disappear. I always like to see it a little bit. So coming right down from your earlobe and straight out like this, you might see a little peak of it as you're staring straight on at the person. Um, and it should feel like that shoulder seam is a saddle and you're, and you're sitting properly in that saddle without leaning one way or the other. So shoulder seams are really, really important. So I would switch over to getting that shoulder to fit properly. And then you might have to do some work down the rest of the body. But if you have a garment where the shoulder doesn't fit you, it's too long, the gar the, all the rest of the garment looks sloppy. It's too tight, all the, the rest of the garment looks ill-fitting. If your shoulders fit well, you can have a garment that's super loose, you know, and hanging from here, but it looks perfect. It looks like it's made for you because that shoulder is fitting well. Because people, you know, they're going to look at your, your face and then they're going to kind of work down to look at the, the garment. So if all this is just fitting all nicely and polished, it, you, you do look more pulled together. So shoulders are everything. Work on those shoulders till you get them right. Okay. All right, we have another question coming in from a somewhat beginner. Christina uh, has a question about adjustments. So if after cutting out the fabric, the bust dart is too high, can mm -hmm. this be adjusted lowered during the sewing process? I am a new sewer and I'm not sure if the legs will still be okay if I have to lower the dart while constructing the garment. Yes. You can do that. You can do it. I would do it on your pattern though. Well, maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know that it's too high till you sew it up. Um, but yes, you, that's an easy thing to do. If you have, let's say you have your front, um, I'll do one of my bad sketches here. Um, and you have say your dart right here. Uh, I'll show you what right here is. Okay. Maybe you have something like that and there's your dart, right? And you want to lower it. Let's say your, your figure point is actually right here, okay? What you wanna do is measure, figure out where your figure point is and measure from the existing dart down to where, you're, where you want it, where you want that point, okay? So let's say that's half an inch. Then you're gonna take this leg, move it down half an inch, this leg, move it down half an inch, and then you're gonna redraw your dart, okay? Um, but you, you are going to um, also have to ah, true that dart. Um, so don't forget that step if right here, right here, okay? So you're here, right? You have to fold that dart. Let me see, can you see this? I think you can. Uh, you're gonna have to fold that dart, that new dart, and then redraw your side seam. Okay, make sure that that's all nice and smooth and there's no jogs in your side seam. So fold your new dart, take your tracing wheel, trace that over the new dart so you have your proper shaping for those legs. And then your new dart is right here. Okay, so first determine how far down you need to bring that point and then the legs will follow, okay? So absolutely you can do that. And maybe, you know, maybe you sew it up in muslin and then, or your mock-up fabric and you don't know you need to move it. Um, whenever you're sewing your mock-ups, give yourself kind of a big basting stitch, not so big, maybe three, 3.5. Then you can just rip stuff out as you go and reposition it. It, it really helps. Um, Cause then it's easy to rip stuff out while it's kind of on your body and you can drape it on your body, but you absolutely can adjust a dart as long as like the dart bulk wasn't cut out absolutely you can move that down just just try to move it down um uh straight down and really with adjusting commercial patterns if you can if you can you want to think about it as adjusting um whenever you're adjusting a, a pattern commercial or otherwise maybe you've made it your you've done the patterning yourself um, if you want to make something bigger or smaller or just darts up or down, always try to adjust um, kind of up, down, right, left. Um, 
if you can, sometimes you do need to do wedges like at the shoulder or, you know, lifting it up here. Sometimes you do need to do wedges, but if you can make as many changes as you can on a, um, you know, kind of a north, south, east and west type thing, um, you're going to preserve the integrity of the pattern better. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you have to go off on wedges and things like that. Totally fine. But to really preserve the integrity of the, the pattern, because you bought it, you liked it, you like it, you want it to look like that. You generally are going to try to do everything on a, um, you know, an up, down, uh, right, left. So you'll add, you know, like lengthen or shorten here. You're just doing this or you're overlapping this way um, or you're bringing it out this way. So most, I would say on your commercial patterns, try to always keep those adjustments on the, um, the right, left, up, down. And then you'll preserve the integrity of the pattern. And more importantly, you preserve the integrity of the grain line. Okay. But sometimes you do need to do the wedges and that's fine too. All right. I'm so going to try to get <laughs> one, yeah. maybe two more questions in. Uh, let's see. Miss Jeff Miss Jefferson has a question about when you want to add ease to a pattern. So when you want to add ease to a pattern, how do you maintain the fitting area around the arm side if you want a looser fit? Say that one more time. When you want to add ease to a pattern, mm -hmm. how do you maintain the fitting area around the arm side if you want a looser fit? Okay. Um, so Miss Jefferson, this I think is pretty, it seems complicated, but I think, this is generally what I want, what I do. So if I want to, um, I just want to make it bigger. So tell me if that's not kind of if I'm misunderstanding. We, we just want to make this bigger. What you're going to do is this front and back. Let me, let me draw this here. Okay. Here's your, your, here's your armhole, you know, your neck and whatnot. What you're going to do is here's your figure point. Important that we identify that. That's the, say the high figure point. Okay, what you're gonna do, let's put this down for a sec. And what you're gonna do is draw a straight line from shoulder to base of the garment. And this kind of ties into our up, down, right, left. And then you're gonna cut it. Let's pull this out here. Then you're gonna cut like this. Okay, and insert, you can also, well, let's talk about this first, insert. There you go, but insert straight up and down so you maintain that grain line, okay? So you can insert just like this. Now you've increased your shoulder, you've increased it all the way down, but you have maintained your armhole. You haven't fiddled with that armhole at all. Same thing, same principle applies if you're like, this is just a little bit too big. Cut it and overlap it. And now you've just pulled it in a little bit or out a little bit like that, okay? If you would do this on all four pieces, meaning like you're the, both the fronts and both backs, but usually most patterns are symmetrical. So like this would be your, um, uh, you know, your center front, you would do the same thing on the back pattern because we're opening like this, we're increasing the shoulder. So that shoulder on the back has to match it. So you have to do the same thing. It's important to go straight down like this in, because if we wedged it, we just threw the grain line off. Okay. So if you're like, you know what, but I don't want any more at the base, still do this and maybe come in at the base to get rid of that and kind of, you know, blend it up like that. And remember a little goes a long way. If this is a quarter of an inch, you're actually adding an inch because it's a quarter here, quarter on the other center front, quarter on the back, quarter on the back. That's it. That's increasing it an inch. Um, you know, or maybe you're doing half an inch that would increase it two inches. Okay. You have to stay to the outside of the high figure point though, because if, you, if you're if you inside or on the high figure point, you've just moved the apex and perhaps that this garment is fitting you well. You don't wanna move that apex um, because now you've just moved where the cup of, for the breast is and it's not gonna fit. You also don't wanna do something like this because now you're increasing the neck, which is that you, you don't want that. Maybe that neck is fitting really well, okay? So only do this if you're, if you want to increase the neck size. So generally you're doing that. You're cutting just like this. And then now you've preserved the armhole. You've preserved the shoulder. You've really preserved the garment. This is, this is like grading. 
So a grader, when you grade a pattern, they're, they're always working on the, the um, up, down, right, left principle. Okay. So hopefully that helps. All right. And we're going to get to our last question here. There is a lot of love in the comment section for you and your classes and the answers that you've provided. Um, definitely come back if you are loving this interactive back and forth. There's always going to be more. So keep your eyes peeled for information for the next one. But I'm going to get to our final question, which is a much more general one. And it is about you, Susie. So Martha is asking, where can we get your book? Do you have plans for other books? Love your classes on Craftsy. Do you have any more of those coming as well? All right. Um, well, thank you for those questions. Uh, with the book, the book is called Building Patterns, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it You can get it on my website, which is apparelartsproductions.com. Um, and it's an ebook right now. It was a print book for a long time. It's an ebook right now. It will remain an ebook for the short future. There, I can't talk too much about it, but there, there is something in the works to bring it back as a hard book with a with an edit and some new information and stuff like that. Um, so that should be coming soon. Knock on wood. Um, so the hardback is coming. It's just kind of out there a little bit. The the ebook you can get it at apparelartsproductions.com. Uh, just click on ebook. It's $29.99 you can download it and you can print it. So then put it in a binder and then it's your hardback book. That's what I would do. I, I like a hardback book. Um, so it is, it is downloadable, it is printable, it is still out there. Um, and it's, if you already have a version, it's the same version. You don't need to buy it if you already have it. Maybe keep an eye out in the next year or so for maybe something new coming along. So yes, there's another one coming that is, a well, I shouldn't say that, but it's should be coming. <laughs> and it's, um, it's an edited version of this one. And it has a few more, it has more stuff in it. Um, I don't have any plans for any other books right now, um, but I'm always open to suggestions. And um, okay, so that's the book question. What was the other question? Classes um, on Craftsy, uh, oh, love them. Do you have any ones coming up? I do not have any classes on Craftsy coming up, but I welcome them approaching me. Um, you know, it's, if you guys want to um, throw something out there to them and, and have them reach out to me, that would be great. I don't have any coming up now, but I'm certainly not opposed to, um, to starting up again. And I love this format. This is fun. I, I really, as you can see, I'm totally nerding out over all of your questions. So this stuff, stuff like this, I think is super fun. So hopefully more of this to come. Perfect. And people in the comments are loving this as well. So Susie, if you have any final thoughts, I'm going to let you get a few of those out. Let us know where we can find you. I know you mentioned your website, but any other places, and then I'll give us a little farewell to say goodbye. But first, Susie. Well, thank you. This was so fun. Yes, you can see um, uh, my the online classes. We're doing Zoom, um, just like everybody else right now, and they're working out great. Um, we're, I'm finishing up through this year, mostly to have people who started with the old apparel arts finish up their certificates and all that. But we're really looking at kind of new ways to do things in 2022. So keep an eye out. You can follow us on Instagram um, at Apparel Arts Productions. Don't follow my Susie fur. You'll just see my cats and my daughter and my plants. Um, <laughs> so that was not exciting. Go for the apparel arts production um, Instagram. And uh, we're still trying to figure out kind of how to move forward after, you know, hopefully post pandemic is around the corner. Um, so, you know, keep an eye out there. We're, we're, we're going to look a little different in 2022. We're just trying to figure all that out. But in the meantime, we have a bunch of classes through the end of the year. Uh, we have a schedule that starts on August 8th. And then another, all of our classes are eight weeks in a stretch. Then we have another eight week stretch in the fall. Take a look, see what you see and um, uh, check that out. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what's going on. We're just trying to figure out a new way forward post, um, post our situation that we're all in. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you so much for all of your answers to all of the questions we got to today, Susie. Uh, thank you for letting us know where we can find you. And of course, thank you to everybody out there watching live. 
come back and rewatch this later. Yes, it does live on the site. So you can access this as a later date if you just want a little refresher on one of the topics we covered today. And of course, come back again for our next Craftsy Chat. We would love to see you. Once again, my name is Leah. And on behalf of the entire team, thank you for joining us. And until next time, happy crafting.